वेलकम टू शांति पीस फॉर मैथमेटिक्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ अ बाउंडेड ऑपरेटर स्पेक्ट्रम इज एक्चुअली अ जनरलाइजेशन ऑफ आइगन वैल्यू फॉर फाइनाइट डायमेंशन द वर्ड स्पेक्ट्रम व्हाई द स्पेक्ट्रम इज यूज हियर बिकॉज फॉर फाइनाइट डायमेंशनल स्पेस द पॉपुलर वर्ड इज आइगन वैल्यू और द सेट ऑफ आइगन वैल्यू it is in finite dimensional space eigen value of a uh, matrices or i can say eigen values of an operator because matrices are having one one correspondence between operators defined on finite dimensional spaces now the word spectrum is used because it is related to a spectrum of a light so as we have a light and the characteristic of the light is depends on how that light is reflect to its spectrum same concept is applicable here the spectrum or i can say uh, eigen values of an operator will characterize a operator so the spectrum of a light is characterize the light how uh, how the light is behaving so the same way the spectrum or i can say set of eigen values will decide how the operator is behaving so that is the idea behind maybe maybe on my point of view the idea behind this spectrum is so let us define what do you mean by this spectrum as i told you in finite dimensional space the eigen values the set of all eigen values are known as a spectrum and we know that if i want to say that in finite dimensional space if i want to define an eigen value of a matrix so i should consider a mat a is which is belongs to m n cross n over f if i want to say that lambda is the eigen value of this matrix a if this lambda is a root of characteristic polynomial what is that characteristic polynomial is nothing but the determinant of a minus lambda i is equal to 0 what does it mean of determinant of a minus lambda i is 0 it means that a minus lambda i is not invertible because this is a matrix a minus lambda i and its determinant is non zero means that a matrix is not invertible so that exactly gives you idea how to define an a spectrum of an operator let us consider h will be a hilbert space over the field k and t is belongs to bl of h what is bl of h is a set of all bounded linear operators defined on h and the the set sigma of t is defined as set of all values lambda belongs to k such that a minus lambda i is not invertible in bl of h it's called spectrum of a it's called the spectrum of t and the element of this spectrum of t they are known as a spectrum values so element of sigma t are known as spectral values of so this is the definition of a spectrum of an operator there is another definition is there it is known as eigen spectrum so if i can consider let h be a hilbert space over the field k t belongs to bl of h then the set sigma et this is a eigen spectrum of t which tells you that set of all lambda belongs to k such that t minus lambda i is not 1 1 and we already have seen that if it is not 1 1 that means the kernel is not zero that means there exists some non zero vector x such that t minus lambda i of x is equal to zero so that also i can rewrite as set of all lambda belongs to k such that there exists some vector x which is in h which is non zero so i just consider that value is equal to 1 so the norm of that value is equal to 1 and t minus lambda ix is zero 
So there exists some non-zero vector x such that t minus lambda i x is zero. This is known as eigen spectrum of p, and that is exactly the th same thing which we are when we are defining an eigen vector of a linear of transformation or a matrices. If I have a T is a matrix, if I can find out some non-zero vector x which satisfies this condition, then that vector we are calling it is an eigen vector corresponding to eigen value lambda. So in the same manner, this value lambda is known as eigen spectrum or I can say it is known as eigen value. So the element of this or I can say the lambda value which I got from here, it is known as the eigen value of a given operator t. So the element of sigma e t are known as eigen value of t or another name is characteristic roots of. Then there is another definition is denoted by sigma a t which tells you set of all lambda belongs to k such that t minus lambda i is not bounded below which is slightly weaker than the previous one. We already have seen that if t is bounded below, implies t is 1, 1. t is not 1, 1, implies t is bounded below. So the negation of this statement is says that t is not 1, 1, implies t is not bounded below. So this is slightly weaker than the previous definition which we have. And this is known as approximate eigen spectrum. And the elements of this Eigen spectrum, approximate eigen spectrum are known as approximate eigen values of t. The element of sigma a t are called approximate eigen value. So by one of the hypotheses which we have discussed in the previous unit, which tells you that if t if h is a Hilbert space, t is belongs to BL of h, then t is not mounted below. Impl implies there exists a sequence xn belongs to h such that norm of xn is equal to 1 and t of xn is tends to 0. So this was the result which we have already discussed in previous unit and due to that what we can say about this approximate eigen spectrum since this t minus lambda i is not bounded below so I can say that there exists some sequence xn in h such that norm of xn is 1 and t minus lambda i xn is tends to 0. This eigen spectrum, approximate eigen spectrum also can be write as it is a set of all lambda belongs to k such that there exists a sequence xn belongs to k, sorry xn belongs to h such that norm of xn is equal to 1 and t minus lambda i, t minus lambda i, xn tends to 0. In previous, we have seen that for eigen spectrum, there exists a point whose norm is 1 such that t minus lambda i, x is equal to 0. Here, we are approximating that value by sequence. That means in this case, we have a sequence xn whose norm is 1 such that it will converge to, so it is approximating to 0. Now let us have some results. So that is a first proposition that we have here, which tells you that if H is a Hilbert space and T belongs to BL of H, which denoted by set of all boundary linear operators defined on H, then prove that lambda belongs to spectrum of T if and only if conjugate of a lambda is belongs to spectrum of T star. Prove this and I will start from this side. So let lambda belongs to sigma T, which double implies I can say that T minus lambda I is not invertible in BL of H. This is due to the definition of the spectrum of T. We already have seen one result which tells you that if T is invertible, and only if t star is invertible and we already have mentioned that the inverse of t star is t inverse of star. Now if I use this 
concept here if t is invertible t star is also invertible so t minus lambda i is not invertible means that i can write t minus lambda i star is not invertible in bl also but we already have seen that a plus b star is equal to a star plus b star so this due to that we can write down this is t star minus lambda i star is not invertible in BLHO. So that means T star minus lambda times I star because we have already lambda, lambda conjugate because alpha times A star will gives you alpha conjugate star. To that we can have it is not invertible in BLHO. But that will implies that T star minus lambda conjugate the i star will gives you i identity so conjugate of an identity operator is identity will will be this so i can say that t star minus lambda bar i is not invertible in bl of h what does it mean that lambda bar or I can say conjugate of a lambda is belongs to sigma of t star. That proves that theorem of t star is the same. So let us see some examples. Define a t from L2 to L2 in this manner. t of x1, x2 up to so on which is equal to 0, x1, x2 up to so on for all x is equal to x1, x2 up to so on belongs to L2. First of all, what I will show is this t does not contain any eigenvalue. So as, as I already mentioned that in finite dimensional space, this spectrum is nothing but the eigenspace or set of all eigenvalues but in finite dimensional space this spectrum is much richer than what we have in finite dimensional space so that is a particular example that i am taking here that is if i have t which is a shift operator then first my claim is this t does not have any eigenvalue so for that let us consider lambda x is equal to sorry tx is equal to lambda x is there for some x if i apply the definition it will give me 0 x1 x2 up to so on that is equal to lambda times x1 x2 up to so on which will gives you x1 is equal to 0 lambda times x1 is 0 and lambda times x plus 1 go to lambda i because the second quantity is lambda times x2 for every i running from 1 to up to so on this will gives you one is 0 i is not equal to 0 I conclude that xi is 0 for all i running from 1 to up to so on because if x1 is 0 due to this equation we got x2 is also 0 x3 is also 0 and so on is your x vector is 0 definition of t minus lambda i x x should be non-zero vector there is no value of lambda which is non-zero such that it is an eigenvector so there is no value of lambda non-zero value of lambda so that it is eigenvalue now what will happen if lambda is 0 if lambda is 0 then tx is equal to 0 Tx is equal to 0 will give you x is 0. So of this, if Tx is 0, that means this quantity is 0. This quantity is 0, that means x is 0, x1 is 0, x2 is 0 and so on. So we can have x is 0. So that will implies or that therefore we can say that T is 1, 1. What we can say is T does not have eigenvalue. But 
does have a spectrum. 